Hi everyone, Liz Klimek here, Planetarium Manager at the South Carolina State Museum. Well, it's been a while since our last post. We have decided that we're going to make these virtual sky talks just a little bit longer and release them every couple of weeks. Now, if you saw our post from a couple of weeks ago, it was our first ever 360 VR video. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, please do so. We're very excited about it. But here we are in mid-August, and there are lots of exciting things to see up in the sky. So let's start by fast-forwarding in time just a little bit to a beautifully clear sky this Friday, August 14th at 9 o'clock. And we're going to start by looking towards the southeast. As you can see, it is not totally dark yet but you can already see two bright planets starting to peek out here in the sky. They look deceptively like bright stars, but they happen to be the planets Jupiter and Saturn. Now, Jupiter and Saturn here have been traversing the summer skies together these past few months, and they will continue to do so going on into fall. And not far from them, higher up here towards the east, is a large triangle made of three very bright stars. This was actually the focus of our post two weeks ago in our 360 video, where we took a tour of this triangle called the Summer Triangle. And if you're interested in learning more about this pattern of stars, as I said, be sure to go check out that video. But these stars do start to appear before it gets totally dark as well. Now, of course, as it gets darker, you can see more things in the sky. So we'll step forward here another hour to 10 o'clock, keep going to 11 o'clock, and keep going just a little bit more until we get to midnight. Now, if this is not your favorite time of the evening, don't worry because we will also take a look at the early morning sky if you're more of an early riser. But at midnight, we get another planet up in the sky. We get this red point of light here rising in the east. Let me swing us around so we're facing more of that direction. This is going to be the red planet Mars. And I will zoom up on that. Now, if you've been paying attention to space news recently, you may have seen that NASA sent another rover to Mars called Perseverance. And also the first ever drone that's going to fly on another planet called Ingenuity. So that's terribly exciting. If all goes well, Perseverance and Ingenuity will arrive on Mars in mid-February of next year. So stay tuned for more on that adventure. But while we're looking at Mars here and talking about exploring Mars, I really think that one of the reasons we're so fascinated with the red planet is because it shares so many similarities with our own home planet, Earth. It has seasons just like we do, polar ice caps just like we do. There are features on the surface that look a lot like what we see right here at home. Everything from sand dunes to dried up riverbeds, dried up lake beds, ancient volcanoes, it has its own Grand Canyon called Valles Marineris that kind of looks like a scar going across the face of the planet. Now, really, this is a, a canyon system, and our Grand Canyon would fit into one tiny little nook of Valles Marineris, but I like to think of it as the Grand, Grand Canyon of Mars. But I think that's why we have sent so many of our robotic explorers there, rovers, landers, orbiters, and we're not the only country to do so. Everyone wants to learn about Mars. Could life have existed there? Maybe there are mar Martian microbes in the soil right now. We won't know until we go explore. Now, as I zoom out here, you might be wondering what these points of light are. These are just the positions of uh, Mars's two moons. This is going to be Phobos and Deimos. 
two moons that are nothing like our own moon, which is pretty round. Um, Phobos and Deimos here are very small. They're kind of misshapen. They really, really remind me of potatoes. So I like to jokingly call them space potatoes. And this software here just shows you their positions relative to Mars. But let me zoom back out so we can see where Mars is in the sky in relation to all of those other stars up there. And as I reorient us here so we can see more of the sky, August is also well known among stargazers for being a great time to see something called the Perseid meteor shower. Now really you can see meteors any time of the year, um, but when there's a meteor shower, you have a greater chance of being able to see more meteors. And the Perseid meteor shower is called the Perseus meteor shower because the meteors, which are streaks of light in the sky, they kind of look like shooting stars, so maybe you've heard the term shooting stars, they appear to originate from this area of the sky where the constellation of Perseus is. So let me show you what those stars are. And let me do that one more time. So I just bring up Perseus. So this is the hero Perseus out of Greek and Roman mythology. I don't see a person there. This really looks more like a broken tree branch to me, but here he is. And these meteors appear to come from this part of the sky, even though those meteors have nothing to do whatsoever with the stars of this constellation or really with stars at all. Meteors are basically little bits of space dust, little grains of sand, little bits of rock that rain down onto the earth and burn up in earth's atmosphere and just give us a nice pretty light show to see. And so during the Perseid meteor shower, basically Earth passes through the orbital path of a comet called Swift-Tuttle. And comets are very messy things. They basically shed a lot. And they shed a lot of debris and as they go around the sun. And so as the comet goes around the sun, it just leaves a path of gunk behind it. And when Earth passes through that orbital path, we kind of plow through all of that stuff and it hits our atmosphere and burns up high overhead. And so that's what's happening when you're viewing meteors. Now, you really don't have to look towards Perseus to see any of the Perseid meteors. You really, you can see them in any part of the sky. What you really need is a nice, clear, dark, unobstructed, unobstructed sky. And you also need a little bit of patience because it's impossible to predict exactly when and where you're going to see a meteor in the sky. So you basically just have to go out, find a nice place to recline, lay under the stars, and just wait and watch. Now, fortunately, if you don't have a lot of patience, there are lots of other things to admire in the sky, such as Mars, and lots of constellations. Maybe you can have fun making up your own constellations, watch Jupiter and Saturn climb higher into the sky. Um, and then hopefully you'll get to see them. Now, I'm going to go forward in time more towards morning, and you can watch as... Perseus there, or that tree branch, if you will, just rises higher in the sky, so you have a better chance of seeing meteors. However, if we get towards four in the morning, we are going to be joined by a moon. Now, it's not a very bright moon. It's going to be a thin crescent, so it'll be really nice to look at. Not super bright, which means you'll still have mostly dark skies. You'll also have this bright point of light here, which will be the planet Venus. So the moon and Venus will be rising into the sky together as dawn approaches. So if I zoom back here, 
So we have more of a view of the sky, maybe tip us forward a little bit. So now we're looking towards the southeast. We have the moon and Venus, Mars high overhead. Perseus is up here. If I show you once again where he is, there's our tree branch. And you have a lot to enjoy in these nice pre-dawn, pretty dark skies. So if you don't want to stay up late and you just want to get up really early, I'll go to five in the morning. It's still pretty dark before morning twilight hits. So if you want to see some meteors, I wish you the best of luck. Um, if you end up not seeing meteors, I hope that you'll at least see one of these bright planets, maybe see that crescent moon in the early morning sky. So all we need are clear skies this weekend for at least a little bit. But I hope this gives you plenty of ideas of things you can enjoy this weekend. Most of what I pointed out will be visible over the next couple of weeks. Only the moon will change shape and position from night to night, and the Perseid meteor shower will continue to wind down as we head farther away from the peak, which was August 11th. And if you'd like to learn more, don't forget the planetarium at the State Museum is open. We have a variety of shows, um, including a full sky tour, a full 30 minute sky tour where we use our digital sky system to recreate what it's like to be under the night sky and point out constellations and planets like you saw here and a lot more. We also have a show about black holes, a show about the history of the universe, and if you ever get tired of astronomy, we have a show about the national parks. So something completely different to enjoy as well. At any rate, thank you so much for joining me. As always, take care of yourselves and each other. And if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below. Thanks once again and hope to see you again soon.